one looking back from 2050, which is the year we've set we're going to cut the gas, and rather assume that you don't come to an agreement. Hello. And he's looking back saying why we were so stupid not to come to an agreement. And our report on the Council of Europe, which we're going to deal with today, is about getting people to recognise and play a part in the public opinion that there must be an agreement in Copenhagen. We could have saved ourselves, but we didn't. It's amazing. What state of mind were we in to face extinction and simply shrug it off? Search, visible impacts of climate change. So what I'm proposing, and what the chairman has now set in hand, is for the Council of Europe to take the lead in the political sense of campaigning for that agreement in Copenhagen. We will have our meeting in September. That will be for the decisions that are coming in December. We will be represented, as indeed the uh, chair of the committee was represented also here uh, at the Kyoto discussion. What we need to do, therefore, is establish that body of principles. And I put it in these words, and they were words that were said by Lord Stern in his latest book. Indeed, the challenge for us in our 60th anniversary is to fight for a blueprint for a safer planet. I think that's what the normative the task is, and we are parliamentary voices. And I think the challenge to the Council of Europe is a remarkable one coming at an appropriate time that we could have an influence we can't afford to get it wrong. Ironically, it looks like there really isn't need for new technologies, as you call it. We do have the technology solutions that can deliver those carbon dioxide and greenhouse gas emission costs that are needed. Perhaps even more ironically, uh, one third of the needed costs will actually save us money. So there should be no obstacle in undertaking.